On the bottom of my Ascend pack here, a really nice little compartment. I've got my sleeping bag in the compartment right now, but I want to show you something about my sleeping bag. This is really cool. Wrapped around my sleeping bag here, I've got this little stove. So I move my sleeping bag out of the way, and I've got a stove here. Now the stove weighs 19 ounces, and it can actually be smaller uh, but I have all the accessories in it. I'm not going to use all the accessories, but um, right now while I'm just kind of in the process of testing this stove out, which has been fun, um, I'm just keeping it all together. This is the Little Bug Senior. This is how it comes. It's actually thin, like I said, 19 ounces, and it hugs around. I can show you that again. It hugs right around your sleeping bag. You could strap it to that sucker and keep it completely out of the way. So that's really cool. And now the Little Bug Junior would would do the same thing, but it could go on a smaller pack. Or I'm not sure. I don't have that, but I imagine you could probably fit it around something like this, you know. But anyway, we'll dig into this in a bit. This is the uh, the chain here. This is for you can see the little picture here. This is for using. Um, like a train geo burner with the stove. So hold your pot. I'll use this in the morning when I make my coffee. But we'll get into all that in a little bit. Show you guys what I'm what I'm sleeping with tonight. I normally retire this bad boy um, this time of the year by now, just because it's so hot. And this is the Skeeter Beater, and it's a great hammock. Just in my opinion, it doesn't work so well in the uh, in the hot summer. Sure, it keeps the bugs out up here, but if your body happens to rub up against this, the bugs they're gonna get you. Last summer, I got 1,500 mosquito bites because I slipped off my sleeping pad a little bit, and my back and shoulder was exposed. So that was that was beyond crazy. Check it out. loud sucker aren't they anyway um, all I'm gonna do tonight is I just got my my thermo rest ridge rest in there with the nickel plating on it I, I could use my other sleeping pad but you know what I just wanted a quick setup and I've got my sleeping bag obviously you saw that and I've got a little small pillow um, not a lot <laughs> just just a quick car camp, quick hang. I said we had some strong winds um, yesterday, and I knew it was going to be wet. You can see the ground is still. You see the ground is still muddy. Um, I knew it was going to be wet. I knew I was going to find a lot of wet wood around. Um, so I went kind of searching some of these trees that would maybe, hopefully, had some dead stuff. So I did find this whole branch that's dead found some other dead stuff a little bit damp bug just flew in my mouth a little bit damp but you know what this will work um i'm gonna get some of this little stuff started up first um what i can at least um the little or your the little or your sticks are the smaller they are the uh, quicker they'll go up and the hotter they burn and they'll help ignite the larger ones that might be a little bit wet so i'm not concerned about getting a good a good burn on in the stove and the stove I'm going to use has a large chamber so it'll burn up just fine check this thing out this is a hanging pot stand it's pretty sweet they call it the senior fire bowl you can hang it and um, there's the I don't know if they have the junior fire bowl but the, the directions that come with it are pretty awesome but you know what let me just show you how it goes together because it's pretty cool so pretty self-explanatory though just make sure your ends are obviously on the same side together clicks together whoops clicks together it's the base and this is pretty neat too 
just spins around whoop, like that. And you click one side and you just give it a slight tweak to it and it'll bend over and it catches on the other side. This is not difficult to do at all, but line these tabs up here. I did put this together at home because I was way too curious about it. And it was super easy to put together, as you can tell. So here's the cool thing about this. I can put this on the ground, like, like that, or I can hang it. And let me show you how um, the stove sits on there. I'm not gonna hang it tonight, but I will show you how it is hung. Now, as always, I put my stove in a plastic bag because I do not want to get soot all over my packs. It's just a pet peeve of mine. So you're putting the stove together. Depending on how you want to do it. I'm going to set it up high. Okay, so you have this slot and this slot. You can set it up high, low. And you can even, oops, you can even set it up low or lower, okay? The small, if you can see that, I might have you had a camera, I apologize if you are. The small slot here is actually for the alcohol burner or for the, the pot stand to use the alcohol burner with and you just stick the um, chain in there. I have the chain over here. Like this, I'll just show you while I have it out. Just like that. And then however you're gonna have the uh, the pot set in there. What you'll do is you'll end up sitting, you'll end up putting your pot on here with the alcohol burner underneath you. Looking at it, I wonder if you couldn't just stick your Trangia burner right inside of there and let it hang underneath the pot and use the pot stands. Yeah, that's something we might try. Who knows? But it's a cool, cool idea. Another way to get a stove to have another option to it. So anyway, we'll go ahead and set this up. You set it up, um, traditionally you set it up in two pieces. So one like this. And then the other just opposite of that. And if I can get this in camera without the without being completely dark on me here. Put my stuff away also. You come in and you just connect your rivets like this. And then... pushes down like that and your rivets will pop in there like that that's it and then this piece right here the rivets here on the back of these they line up as well make sure I have all my rivets lined up which I think I do oh, maybe I, I don't have that one lined up but it's just a matter of pushing it in I don't have that rivet all the way in. Oh. Maybe I do. <laughs> I guess I do. So, really simple. But check this out. This is really the coolest thing I want to show you. It's... When you put this onto the fire bowl, you make sure there's the rivet here that you actually put the stove on that side of the rivet. Okay, all the way around. And what it'll do is, besides the, keeping this off of the ground now so you don't damage the ground, if you wanted to put the hanger on here, just let me show you that. What did I do with the chain I just had for the hanger? 
Oh, they're here in the bag. <laughs> Pretty cool, really easy. I think my friend, this bug is back again. He likes the light, they all do. So I'm thinking that this chain would work really good if you were, you know, in the mountains, on uneven ground, or even yesterday, but I wasn't going to take my son out yesterday in a storm. It's not a really responsible parent thing to do. But even if you were, you know, in wet conditions, check that out. There you go. Check that out. That's cool, isn't it? So I'm definitely going to find a way to use the stove with the hanger or find a need for it because it's cool and I dig it. I would think that I might have to use maybe a uh, a metal, I mean I could put it over on a stick but I would think I might want to use like a metal hanger just because I've already used the stove and the stove takes off. So. But tonight, I'm not going to use these things. So, cool as it is, I'm, I'm in a park and I'm on pretty flat ground. I mean, where I'm at is up above everything, but, but this is cool. I love this because um, when you're watching videos... Of other people using the little bug you know they're either using it directly on the ground or some people are using them in bowls and stuff like this and I love it so and the best thing about it is is bowls and stuff like that they all take up room I mean when we're when we're backpacking or bike packing or hiking or even if you're just car camping you still always try to keep a little bit of room you know or try to take up as less room as possible so it's awesome because this folds flat but enough about that um, I've only used this stove twice so I, I don't have everything in sync I haven't perfected putting it together but you know it's really not difficult uh, me not putting that that rivet in all the way it's not like everybody's gonna have a problem with it or anything like that you know what it's just it is what it is and I want to keep the video as real <laughs> as possible so I'm going to break up some of this wood and get the fire started all right guys well I went and got some some of the sticks busted up I'm gonna rock out another one of uh, these fire mites that was sent to me from Mike over at Lone Cedar Outdoors. They're super, super efficient. Let's uh, just pull one of these bad boys out. I don't want to, I just want you. Look at that, isn't that cool? Look at a little dynamite, fire mite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and unravel this and I'm gonna make it kind of furry because I'm going just to use a fire steel and I'm actually gonna use my little itty bitty fire steel um, I don't use it very often, so. So I went ahead and I finished unraveling this to make it nice and furry. I'll give it a go. Well, I would say that that caught pretty good. If you're wondering why I struck that off is because I haven't used this, uh, little fire steel that was made for me very often. In fact, I'll show you what I do with this little fire steel. It's kind of funny. Cool thing is I'm not really putting too much work into this fire steel. Or into the fire steel. Into the fire starter. And it's fairly windy out here, so that's good. And it's taken off on its own. I just wanted to 
help keep it kind of tilted a little. Love it, love it, love it. So the fire starters that I normally use, I either use this fire starter that you just seen, or I'll use the uh, the ones that I have affectionately dubbed from Bob 808 Night, the egg drop fire starters because I love them. But these are the fire mite once again from Mike over at Lone Cedars, Lone Cedar Outdoors. I'm gonna. I'm pretty sure that this fire starter is gonna burn really well, so I'm gonna throw some heavy, thicker wood in there. As you can tell, it's already doing a good job. You can see I'm putting these larger sticks in here, and the cool thing is with this riser up here like this. See how large these are? With this riser. For the pot stand or the pot stay, um, I can do that, and I can put these sticks in in a, a really nice um, laying position, so that way they'll ignite and burn. It's a it's a fun stove. It really is. Um, I'm actually kind of intrigued now, and and want to try the junior. Now that I've been using this one. I'm just gonna fill up because this wood is not exactly dry, but it's taken off. Let me give you a view here of what I got going on down here in the chamber. Nice, huh? Maybe I'll take one of these and put them over there. Kind of give a little bit of a swirl. Yeah, it's all good. So now that's gone, done and going. Some food going, shall we? To bear with me a little bit, I'm not used to making this specific recipe for one person, so. In case anybody wonders what knife I'm using, I'm using the Bird Cara Cara 2. Oh, they're already getting nice and browned. Fire is starting to slowly, let me crank you over here, slowly starting to come down a little, which is fine. But, make a little pocket over here for my vegetables on my bag. Probably not going to use more than half of this. So, Pocket bellows is really fun. Um, my fire was actually kind of over here in this area and I wanted to bring it over here. And it's just a matter of directing it with airflow. 
Super, super cool. We'll always, always, always enjoy this thing. I was showing you earlier about my little fire seal, and I keep it. In my little, this is my little tin kit here that I have. It's, you know, I enjoy it. It all just fits in here really nice, so. All right, now that my onions are see-through and brown, time to add the peppers. Now that I got the vegetables where I want them, I'm laying pepper jack cheese on top to help the cheese melt in. And I'm gonna need a lot of it. I wanna cover it all the way up. Got an onion. Here we go. Oh yeah. It won't take long for that cheese to melt at all. Oh look, I have another piece. <laughs> While I'm waiting for my cheese to melt, on top of my veggies, I'm gonna take this nice thin sliced roast beef. Like that. So for this, you better be a cheese lover. Look at that. Get it on there while the cheese is still nice and gooey. <laughs> Look at the cheese, it's so gooey. So this is how I make a campfire Philly. It's not pretty. Well, kinda is, but it's good. Hopefully you can see me all right, because where would we be without our first bite rule? You do all that work cooking it, might as well show it off you're eating it. It's gonna be gooey and good and here we go. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I have these smaller buns because I'd put this food together yesterday. And I had planned on um, eating this with uh, Keegan and myself, but that didn't happen because of the storm. So, Dad's just eating some small. I just called myself Dad, didn't I? <laughs> I'm just eating some small fillies, but they're so good. good size you just gotta tuck them in a little bit want some <laughs> oh they're good mm -hmm. the best part I decided to eat them is you don't need to cook the meat because the toppings are so hot when you put them on top they heat the meat up. <clears throat> I did it slow for the video but in all honesty it's a super fast recipe that you can make when you're out in the woods just get some thin sliced deli meat, an onion, a green bell pepper, some pepper back jack cheese, cook your mushrooms up so they're sweet, throw in the pepper so they take the flavor Throw the cheese on top of it, wait till it's melted. Mix it up, throw it on top. Super easy, super good, so worth it. Alrighty, well, we're in the hammock and uh, about to get some sleep, so we will see you in the morning.
I do love a quick setup and camp teardown. Then again, who doesn't? Well, here's the stove we used last night. And here's all the ash we went through. That's that's crazy. Let's look let's look at it with this. That's that's to the base. That's a lot of ash. A lot of good cooking. Completely burned though. So we're back and I I dumped the ashes of the stove. I'm gonna pop it apart. Super easy. I'm gonna pop this apart. Probably it might be better to stack it like this. And uh, pop this apart. I like this because it's just so thin. And um, I'm going to use the Trangia burner. Now, the cool thing about, about this stove is I have never received a stove that had such precise instructions. <laughs> this is great. This is great for people who um, don't use stoves a lot or people who do use stoves a lot but don't use this concept. So it, it's, I'm laughing because it, it's good. I'm not laughing because it's unbelievable. So, um, for the instructions, what you want to do is assemble the stove without the pot supports. So, I think we can probably get away just by doing this. And we can. So the pot supports are out. And... So when you so when installed, the sling will form a suspended rectangle above the stove, is what the instructions say. Get my stove. I'm gonna get some fuel put in it. Fuel is in the stove. Here, a little click. I'm gonna plug my camera in. I didn't plug it in last night. And it's uh, gonna die. There we go. Got some juice now. All right. So next come the pot stands. Let's see. We're gonna form a rectangle right above the burner itself. Okay, so I'm going to try all the way down at the bottom because I don't know I don't know exactly what what my pot's going to do once I put it in there. And the reason why I say that is because once I put my pot in, it's going to pick up on the sides. Let me show you a better view. Okay, so here's the burner in the bottom of the little bug. Like this. Now, what I'm saying is, is once I put my pot in, it's going to pick up on the sides here, and it's actually going to pick the stove up a little bit. So, let's see how she's going to work. kettle I have. I keep stuff in my kettle, so. Alright, let's see how it's going to sit. Cool. <laughs> That's pretty neat. And so now the little bug's literally working as a, uh, as a windscreen. So, this is going to be cool, a little different, but I'm excited to use it like this. So let's get her started. I love how that kind of just hangs there, but yet it balances the stove out, or the pot out by its own weight. It's cool.
I just pull the wife's hair tie, <laughs> it's new, off of the filter. Open it up and put it in. My water's done. Easy peasy. That's what I like. Especially in the morning. Oh yeah. Coffee is done. I'll show you guys how well this actually does pour. Watch this. It's not slow at all. It's not as fast as a press, but then a press, you have to let the water sit in the press for like four minutes. This is right away. And if you just want to fill it up with water, you can even put the lid on there and just let it sit. For me, it does just fine the way it is. I love my press, don't get me wrong. I carry my press with me when it's me and my kids because this is good for a single cup of coffee. The press is good for like four, at least the size I have. So did the stove get, let's, let's check out over here. Did the stove get hot? Actually the stove got warm, but not too hot that I can't move it and snuff the fire. I really enjoyed using this stove. Um, I enjoy using lots of stoves, as you guys know it, but this stove, I see a lot of potential in it as far as um, camping with the kids, maybe um, not necessarily, um, I don't know. I mean, I had said before when I'd used it that I wasn't sure if it would be a good uh, stove for backpacking, but you know, after using it and seeing how lightweight it really is, I wouldn't see a problem with it backpacking. I mean, it'll wrap right around your sleeping bag, and technically, wrapped around your sleeping bag, it's only taking up that much room. 19 ounces. I would say it's backpackable. Now, I haven't used the Little Bug Junior. Um, after using this one, I definitely plan on using it, for sure, because uh, this has been a good time. So, um, yeah, I would say definitely... A backpack stove um, if the little bug junior works as well as this one I would say most definitely a backpack stove um, only thing that I I'm not a fan about which I'm I'm kind of picky when it comes to these would be the case um, considering it's a wood stove you know I would like to see it in black because you know, once you put all your wood stove components together, they're going to be dirty. You know, and um, yeah, I can I can brush them off, but you're still going to want to put them into the into the thing. So for what I'm doing is I'm still using the good old bag just to keep everything from getting full of soot. the bag doesn't take up any more weight or anything like that it's just it's an envelope style bag that they have it's easy to put it all together but even just using it a couple times I'm already getting soot marks on it not that soot marks mean anything bad but you know you'd like to keep your stuff looking legit and looking clean but yeah i got some mud on it too but that's all right that's character 
that dries off. But yeah, I like the stove. Um, you know, when you see it in the package, you're like, oh man, that's a that's a big stove because that was my first impression. But when you put a sleeping bag in there and you put it in your bag and it's it's put away with that stuff, it's not a big stove. It really doesn't take up a lot of room at all. Yeah, some other stoves take up about half the amount of room by sliding in the back, but this hugs it and it's 19 ounces. So that's pretty awesome. Coffee's hot and good this morning. Mm. So there are three people camping. Um, it doesn't look like anybody's awake yet. So it'd be really, really cool if uh, if they wake up and they see me out here talking to a tree. In fact, it'd be great. Make my day. Probably my week. Anyway, um, Little Bug Senior Stove. That thing is a monster. And I don't mean monster by weight. Okay, I mean monster just by the sheer capacity size and output that it has on it. It's actually light, you know, so it is large, but once you pack it up with a sleeping bag, it's not going to be too big. I really don't think so. Unless you're not taking a sleeping bag with you and using a bedroll, but then you can use it again because you can put it around your bedroll. But I like it. I really do enjoy it. And um, I was really impressed by the amount and the size of the wood that I was able to put into the stove because that's something that's not um, commonplace for me. I feed a lot of different types of stoves as you guys know but that one was very unique because it's a large burn capacity. Really really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to have to try the Little Bug Junior. It's, uh, it's, it's a given. After using that stove you have to try the other stove. You know it's just something you got to do <laughs> if you're like me it's definitely something you got to do so I really enjoyed it a lot um, I, I can't really even begin to tell you all the good things that it has uh, on the negative side I think that the bag you know I, I really wish the bag was black not blue just because of the soot um, but I mean that's not really a negative I mean geez I just put it in a bag and it's fine it's just a dislike I guess because there's nothing to do with the bill or the make of the stove at all um, towards the build or the make of the stove I've got no complaints with it whatsoever because it's a very simple robust design it's solid it's lightweight um, they even in their uh, in their not really their directions but they even say that if you're you know using a large amount of wood or the smaller wood and the stove flares up uh, you can actually use water to, to cool the stove or cool the fire down a little bit and that's a rarity because most stoves or you know people who use stoves will tell you don't put water in your stove or don't dump water in there or on it or whatever else because you don't want to warp or crack your stove well they're saying you know the way that their stove is made and the way that it has the curve to it they're not concerned about any warpage so that's it's kind of cool super easy setup I love the fire bowl the fire bowl um, I haven't seen anybody really use a, do a video on the fire bowl um, there's a handful of videos on the little bug stove out there but I Maybe there is. I just haven't seen one on the fire bowl. Um, I've got to find a place to hang that sucker because that thing is cool. Um, you know, even if it's just because the ground is unsteady or uneven or it's muddy or it's wet and you don't want to put your stove down in the mud. Uh, if you're down south and you're in the swamp areas or if you're in the Everglades or, you know, or, or any place like that, you know, I mean, we have a, we have a wetlands here. Ooh, I should go to the wetlands and use it. Uh, I don't think we don't really have any trees in the wetlands, so I'd have to make a tripod. Anyway, um, yeah, but I'm gonna find a place or a way to use it because it's way cool to hang it. Um, to use the fire bowl itself is pretty much any time I use the stove on a, on the grass that's not my property. Um, other than that, I don't see a single single problem. No downfalls with the stove whatsoever. Um, I like the large um, cooking surface. Uh, I used it once already to cook uh, fish on. Now I cooked enough fish for a family of six on that stove, no problem. And in fact, I cooked it for uh, eight people because my little ones, the wind's blowing, sorry about that. My little ones had friends over that night, uh, so I actually fed their friends as well. And uh, my oldest son is a very big boy. He's about 6'1", 250 pounds of muscle. And uh, he eats a lot. And there's still enough fish to feed him. So that just kind of 
the volume of food you can cook on it is really good. I enjoyed it a lot. I, I can't begin to tell you just the simplicity of it. And last night, for me, was a very quick camp. It was very come out, throw the stove together, cook some food, go to bed, wake up, tear the um, you know the hammock down, take the stove down, campsite's cleaned up, I'm enjoying my coffee, I'll finish it on the way home. So, I like it. It really, really made my evening go smooth as well because it wasn't a lot of tinkering around with it. It's basic, but not too basic. Okay, guys. Well, I can talk stoves all day long and I'll never get out of here. So, thanks for coming along with me. It's, you know, just something that I do sometimes. So, take care and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.